All Things Considered. I'm Noah Adams. And I'm Linda Wertheimer. We're going to listen now to some of the old men who learned the blues along the Mississippi, worked their way north, and finally came near the end of their lives to a little city way out in Kansas and a sanctified place to play music. Hey, everybody, let's have some fun. You only live but once, and when you're dead, you're done. So let the good time roll. Let the good time roll. I don't care if you young or old. Get together and let the good time roll. Weeping Willie Robinson is an old-time blues man. He's still working at the age of 73. He has several regular gigs around the Boston area. He has fans. But like lots of the elderly men who played the blues, he never made his own record. And he wanted to. He wanted to leave something of his blues behind. Now he has. Willie Robinson says he went to Salina, Kansas to do it because of Mighty Sam McLean, another musician and old friend. He heard me make a statement one time in the House of Blues. I said, I want to record one CD before I die. And uh, he said, well, I'm going to see that you do that. But I've been promised so many things before. I didn't pay much mind. And before I know anything, he called me on the phone and said, you go in the studio. We flying to Kansas out there. And we flew one out there and did it. Weeping Willie Robinson went back to Boston, and a few weeks later, a CD arrived in the mail from Kansas. It was everything he hoped it would be. Well, at last on time, well, my train finally come in. Mr. Robinson went to Blue Heaven Studios in Salina, Kansas to make his recording. Finding the old men of the blues and coaxing them to come all the way out to the middle of Kansas to be recorded is the project of Chad Kassam. He's a transplanted Louisianian, very intense about the music he collects and produces. When he brings the elderly blues artists to Salina, they find Blue Heaven Studio is in a church a substantial red brick church on the corner of a downtown Salina street. It's been wired for sound by some of the best engineers and designers in the business. They were also, Kasim says, startled to see what they'd be working with. When they drove up, each one of them came at a different time and all their reactions were the same. They go, wow, this is a church. I said, well, I told you it was a church. (laughs) They said, no, no, but this is a church. I said, yeah, I told you. No, they go, we thought like Little House on the Prairie, you know, the steeple and all the people and stuff, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, you know, and, and then the next guy drove in. He says, you know, in New York, we have nothing like this. He goes, you know, normally we just have an isolated studio room that you have to, you know, pump in uh, fake ambience. He goes, you're just so, so fortunate. The church was built early in the century. The sanctuary is a vaulted room with a beamed plaster ceiling that looks like the hull of a ship turned upside down. The preachers of bygone days could stand on the altar, where the stage is now, and easily be heard by everyone. Gary Groover is a musician who was there the same day we were. He played a few bars on a saxophone to show us the way the room affects the sound. For 
For the elderly blues men who've been playing here, there is no need for electronic manipulation of their music. They can play as they always have. The church makes its contribution, the reverberant sound of its high ceiling and oak beams, and the result is a good acoustic recording of the blues. This is a man who's played in Kansas City most of his working life. He's called Little Hatch, short for Hatchet, a nickname he acquired when he was much younger. I'm gonna buy me a ticket Just as long as my ride on Ticket, baby. Just as long as my right home. Well, you know I'm gonna ride, I'm gonna ride. I'm gonna ride all night long. Little Hatch was part of the inspiration for Blue Heaven Studios. Chad Kassam first heard him years ago. Fifteen years ago when I, when I came to Salina, I went to Kansas City for the weekend and uh, went to a nightclub and heard this, I guess back then he was probably a um, 65-year-old blues guy playing acoustic blues and I was just totally blown away. I mean, I was like, wow, this guy ought to be recorded. And to think that 15 years later, I was able to record Lil Hatch, which is just amazing. And to think that I was the guy to be able to do it, it just feels really great. Kassam comes from Cajun roots in Louisiana. He moved from there to Kansas. He wanted a different place to begin a new life. I moved to Salina from Lafayette, Louisiana about 15 years ago. And uh, I came here to get sober. And I don't know how much people know about Louisiana, but the Cajuns like to, to party and pass a good time, as they say. So I came to, to Kansas to, to get away from that. And, and I was uh, working for basically minimum wage as a cook and then I just started collecting records as a hobby and then it just grew from that. Kassam created a mail order company for collectors of records and CDs. He began remastering old recordings to add to his mail order business and when he heard that the old First Christian Church located behind his mail order outfit was for sale he bought it primarily for storage but then he discovered its natural sound. And a studio with a control room that could handle his other recording business made sense. But the blues is a labor of love. Kassam built an apartment out of the Sunday school rooms downstairs with a big TV and a circle of lazy boys to keep his elderly artist comfortable. He brought a cousin from Louisiana to cook in the old church kitchen after recording sessions. There are big meals served downstairs on the long pine table that came with the church. But to ensure that the old man will see the point of coming all the way out to Salina, Chad Kassam hired Jimmy D. Lane, who came from Chicago, to be music director for Blue Heaven Studios. He knows many of the old musicians through his father, the late blues guitarist Jimmy Rogers. Jimmy D. Lane plays an electric version of the blues, but the old church is now equipped for that, too. Uh, check your vocal, would you? One, two, one, two. Check, check. One, two. Let's run through a few bars, make sure we tune in. thing that I've had the experience of being involved with next to playing with my father uh, to see him bring in cats like Honey Boy Edwards and Little Hatch and Weeping Willie Robinson and uh, to be a part of that 
is a great thing. As good as they are, we just hard. It's just hard to believe that nobody else heard what we heard and 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 wanted to invest time and money mm-hmm. in them. And uh, they're dying as we speak. It makes you realize that the urgency of the whole thing. And that's why, you know, we're spending everything we got, and it's made us really realize that uh, we gotta record as many people as we can. The people deserve to hear, the musicians deserve to have a product like we're giving them. This is blues. What we're giving to the public, the way Chad has envisioned to record, the way this church sounds to record these people in, it's amazing. And I've been around all kinds of music all my life, mainly blues. I live with it, breathe it, and go to sleep with it, wake up in the morning with it. This is the way these guys deserve to be recorded and packaged. It's real. And the sound it speaks for itself. Jimmy D. Lane, the music director, and Chad Kasim, the owner of Blue Heaven Studios in Salina, Kansas. This was a recording session at Blue Heaven Studios for 84-year-old Honey Boy Edwards from Chicago. This is called the West Memphis Blues. Why? 